Greetings Floss Tube. It's Trisha the Left Handed Stitcher. I am back tonight to show you my floss storage and handling system. So in 2012 I got back into stitching and I decided at that time that my floss storage system just wasn't working for me. So I spent about a month scouring the internet looking for ideas, products, whatnot, and I didn't find exactly what I needed but I was able to borrow elements of the different things I saw and read about to create my system. The requirements that I had since I choose not to bobinate, I store full skeins I needed something that was reasonably inexpensive, easy to use, and easy to maintain. So th this is what I came up with. If you remember these boxes from my previous video, it's just standard photo boxes that I got from Hobby Lobby. I store the full skeins in snack size baggies and I created these cards to provide the structure and identification. The uh, index cards are a little bit undersized for these bags so that's why I created my own. So the floss goes in Let me scoot that out of the way. I put this end first down towards the bottom and then I scooch the other end down so that they line up all nice and neat. And then I just close up the bag and put it back in my box. So there it is. I use the dividers that come from, come with it to mark where the different hundreds delineations are. And on the front of the box I have the range that's in the box and I numbered them sequentially. And this system is working really well for me. I love it. So this is definitely a keeper. So now I'm going to show you my floss handling system. I use envelopes. I've been doing this since I started stitching back as a teenager. At the time, this is just what I decided to use and it works so well for me, I've kept doing it. So. I write the number of the floss in this corner and then I put the symbol for this particular project in this corner. Back in the day I used to draw the symbols on. Now I can just enlarge the key, print it out, and then cut the symbols out and tape them onto the front. Uh, just two piece of, uh, pieces of advice with that. Make sure you keep your symbols right side up because if you drop this little piece on the table and you pick it back up you gotta know which way is up because you just don't want to have it sideways or upside down so if there's a line underneath the symbol on the key I cut it so the line stays that helps me make sure that I have them on the right way and when you put the tape on you're gonna have a little bit hanging off the edge you fold it around to the back, but when you do that, make sure you lift the tab flap up first before you push it, because you don't want to tape that down. That just doesn't work very well. Now the envelopes, they just work so well for me because they keep the floss away from dirt. They keep the coils that I put them in, I'll show you that in a minute, real nice. It doesn't, they don't get tangled up and they travel really well 
and they're they're so cheap you can get like a hundred of them for a buck so they go in like I said I use the quart size baggies and then when I'm looking for a color all I have to do is flip through until I find the symbol I need so now I will show you how I put the floss into the, the envelopes. Um, if it's a kit, you know, you use the lengths that come in the kit. But if I'm using a full skein from my stash, this is how I do it. I like to use longer lengths. I know, I know, that's kind of one of those rules that people say you're supposed to use shorter lengths, but I tried it that way it didn't really work with me so I use longer lengths and since I do the loop method the length starts out even twice as long as it would you know before I started using loop so this is the way I do it I start with the skein with the little tail this way you know I am left handed and I grasp the other end loosely with the, my other hand and I just pull it out slowly and I know that the length I use is five and a half pulls so there was one two three four five and a half. So I cut it out here and then I just take it, I hold the tail with my thumb and I wrap it around four fingers into a nice little coil like so and I lay that down I go back to my skein since I already have a half sticking out here I pull five pulls one two three four five and then I pull it out just a little bit more so that when I cut right here it doesn't disappear back into the skein and I gotta hunt for it so there's one more length. I coil it up. And then I kind of lay it over top the other one. Kind of like the Olympic rings. And I continue doing that. I can get two more full length pull, you know, strands from here. So one, two, three four, five, and a half. Cut that. And coil. So then, one, two, three, four, and five. I pull that back to expose where I need to cut it, snip that, and coil. Alright, so now I put them into the envelope. I just pick them up as one mass and slide it right in to the middle of the envelope and when the envelope is closed it holds it nice and tight there they don't shift around and they don't get tangled up they stay in their little coils for when I need them now this leftover bit once I can make sure it doesn't knot on itself give me a second okay, there we go 
This is what I use if I know that I have a small area to stitch and I know I need a shorter length. This one I coil around three fingers. That way I know it's the shorter length that I'm working with. And when I put it into the envelope, I always put this one right in that left hand side. Right down in there. So I know that the short one is here, the main ones are here, and then when I I'm working with the floss and I have remnants that I can still use for, you know, when I have maybe a couple stitches here, a couple stitches there. I coil them up around two fingers and I put them right in here on the side of the envelope and they stay nice. Alright, now when I'm getting ready to stitch and I need a, f a length of floss, I just go in, I grab the top of one of these coils and I just pull it out and the rest of them stay in there real nice. I have three fingers inside and I just pull and uncoil it that way. Now since I used the loop method, I do I get one strand free and I just I use this method I just pull it straight out make sure this tail doesn't tangle on itself and I just keep pulling it's gonna bunch up in my hand as you can see right there keep pulling till it's free and then this one I let go and I smooth it out real gently so that it's nice again. If I just need one strand, I'll coil this back up into its four finger configuration and put it back in here. If I know I'm going to be using a lot of this, stitching a large area, uh, I will break it down into the six individual strands all at one time. But for brevity, I will just coil this back up and stick it back down in there. Now the strand that I pulled, let me make sure that it doesn't angle on itself. I find one end and then I find the other end of the floss. I get them together and even. And then I find you know the loop part of it with my other hand and I just kind of tug and then I run my hand down the length to get the two strands to stick together. So now I have it in its loop. If I'm using it, obviously I thread it right now. If I'm doing more than one, one strand looping, I will coil them up and put them in there. And what I do is I coil these around three fingers. just like so. That helps me dif tell the difference between the main the main coils and the single strand coils. And I can also tell because it has the loop on it. And if I need to store one or more I'll stack them you know across each other just like I've done before and then they rest right inside but up a little bit from it. And then it just goes right back into the, the bag and it's there when I need it. Alright, so now when I finish stitching a project, 
I take the envelopes. If it is just a pattern, it goes in the green box. If it was a kit, the, the baggie stays with the pattern of the kit because unless you can be sure that it's DMC floss, I don't want to mix. Right now, the envelopes live in the green box. When I outgrow the green box, I will transition to using the photo boxes. So right now, this box, I created a divider just out of a Sprite box. Tape little tabs on so that there's the little wings that fit exactly the width of this box. And then I decided that left just a little bit too much wiggle room. So I took took the lid of a shoe box. You can see it's just cut down. It was it was just the right length, I believe. Nope, nope, it wasn't. It was a little bit too long. So what I did is I measured, I cut it half an inch too long, and then I mitered the corner, and I used my double-sided tape to create, you know, just like the other side, matching, and then this just fits down, right down in there, like so and makes it so that these don't shift too much. Alright, so they go back into the green box. I put them in numerical order. And then when I am kitting up another project, I go to the green box. I see if I have the color already in, in an envelope. And if I do, then I pull that. If I don't, I pull a full skein from my stash boxes and create new envelopes. Now, say, you know, I'm pulling this color for a new project. It's got a symbol on it. Well, I'll just tape the new symbol over top of that. And when these envelopes get a little too ragged, I just create a new one. Since they're not, they're so inexpensive, it doesn't matter. So there they are. And that's my green box for my envelopes. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing my system and maybe a few of you see something you like and want to create it for yourself. One little thing with that, the let me get it out. The cards that are in the bags. I created these in Word. I created just a, a 3 by 6 cell in Word and I put the information in it. I used a snip of the color example from the DMC site for that and then the name of the color that DMC uses for it. The, the um, file I still have the original file that I used with this. So if you want to put this system into effect for yourself, just let me know. Um, if there's interest, I will post that file on the Facebook site for our floss tube community. If uh, you don't have Facebook, you can always private message me on YouTube with your email address and I will be happy to send it to you. The I print them out on cardstock so that they are, they have some some rigidity and then I just cut I use my paper trimmer to trim trim off this edge here. I trim along the top here and then I cut six inches wide and three inches tall and then they fit 
real nicely into these snack size baggies. These baggies I can hold, so you see I got four skeins in this one. I can hold about eight in each side comfortably on both sides. So 16 skeins in one baggie. So again, if you guys are interested, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I will be happy to give you any information that you need. So, we'll see you guys later. Bye. And happy stitching!